you find yourself thinking, oh, I could have done more, I should have done more. The weather is absolutely terrible. You can see it's just pouring down rain. But you know what bad weather usually brings? Babies. <laughs> It's two o'clock in the afternoon and the fog is still really bad, which is very uncommon, but pruning blackberries today, they look good. They look good. Well, we're topping them, tying them up. We'll be able to get in here and mow as well. I know what you're thinking. Why do y'all have these Scovich chicken tractors sitting here unused? Well, that's because processing shut us down a couple of years ago. However, there's a new processor opening up about an hour away from us. So these bad boys are gonna get refurbished. We're gonna clean them up uh, and we're gonna deploy them and we're gonna start raising broilers again. So get ready for updates on that. If you've been watching my videos for a while, you probably don't even realize where this was. So this was all in blackberries. We've decided we're pulling this variety of blackberries out. So we're going to raise watermelon here this year. Uh, and then this next fall, it'll be our greens field, but we're super excited. Uh, our goal moving forward in the agritourism is to really, other than the watermelon festival, which is only three days, try to avoid people just being in the extreme heat. You know, the watermelon festival is really located around the farm store. But bringing people out to the blackberry field in the middle of June, it's just so hot. And so our goal is to raise earlier varieties of blackberries so that they can pick them at the same time as during strawberry season. And so we already have some of them planted in another area of the farm. So we're going to raise some uh, watermelons and greens on this this year, which is exciting. Fog is still bad. <laughs> All right, it's muddy, but we got the pickers. These are our dedicated customers. <laughs> we love it. Good little second day to open. We got a lot of pickers today. There's a lot of berries out there too, as I showed y'all before. It's going well. The good part about opening up strawberry picking whenever it's really nasty weather like this is it just brings out the troopers. Like everyone out here picking is just, everybody's so happy and laughing because everybody's muddy and the berries look beautiful and there's a lot of them. Such, such fun, such fun. So I rarely will go and bother people while they're picking. Like it's very much a family event, you know? So I don't like to like be in people's faces asking to take pictures and filming and stuff while they're picking. But sometimes I will wait till they get up in the store and ask to take a picture for our Facebook page or what have you. But I just like to show even when it's muddy, people still having fun, having a good time. All right, we got an old trailer here, Uncle Alfred. It's gonna be our feed buggy. Doesn't look like much now, but just wait till he's done with it. The rain has stopped and it's beautiful. We did have to go through and pick a lot of really bad berries that were damaged from the heavy rain, but that's okay. Cause we were able to let our customers go in and pick first, um, but it's dry. We're just working on projects today. It's so beautiful. There they go with strawberry plants. <laughs> Here it is, the feed buggy. It'll have a roof once we get down in there. We can put about a ton of feed in here for the chickens and then they'll fly up here. We don't know if we might end up taking the, the actual feed compartment off and putting it on skids instead of this trailer, but so far we like it. Time to test our gravity feeder. We're gonna fill it up here over the fence and get all of our feed. Let's try it out. The design works. Trailer's a little light duty for how much weight is in there, but look at this ryegrass through here. Looks great. We are deploying the pig shelter. The pig board. It can be any board, as long as it's used to block a pig. We're getting Beth her uh, farrowing barn ready. She's getting close. We think we're a couple days out. There we go. Got moved. 
shelters providing shade. We're gonna throw some straw under there, but it looks good. Your girl is looking uncomfortable. <laughs> I think we're getting close. Look at all those blooms. You can see this field almost looks white. This is like in the last couple hours. We were out here this morning. Looks good. These are our, the latest variety. Here are your 20, 27 Christmas trees going in the ground. The weather is absolutely terrible. You can see it's just pouring down rain, but you know what bad weather usually brings babies <laughs> the best pair of last time I'm waiting to watch a nurse I just want to make sure that she has nursed them Time to restore these bad boys. We got broilers coming. They're officially at least 24 hours old this morning. All right, refurbished time. Get these going, we also brought over the new egg wagon for the new flock. It's real wet in the field, so this is a good little project. Okay, time to plant some potatoes. Got our seed potatoes. We'll plant a few rows of them. That is the cutest. Haven't shown much of the greenhouse this season. We just started about two weeks ago, but you can see we've got some nice tomatoes coming up. We've got some herbs down there on the end that are starting to come up. So we're getting a, a nice head start. It's coming along. We're going to be training them to get in the trailer. So let's see if this works. I just did this, maybe. 60 seconds ago. You can tell I'm still out of breath. Well, my truth, let's see if anybody actually gets in the trailer. What well, we're gonna be moving them onto the Silva pasture soon out of our old corn maze. And so what I wanna make sure is that when we load them in the trailer, it's not a rodeo. I want it as quick and as simple as possible. And if they're comfortable getting in and out of the trailer because they eat in there, then it should be where the day we move, I drop feed in the trailer, step away, they get in the trailer, and then I close the gate. Well, that worked. Uh pretty good I'd say <laughs> something happened to the other little piglet I don't know 
what, um, I don't know, she got too cold, stinks, you know that this is part of it, right, we've raised livestock before, definitely new to raising pigs like this, but, um, I think what we're going to do is change the way we farrow. Everything we researched about Cooney Cooney says, oh, they'll, they'll, they farrow great out on pasture. Um, and so we thought, well, putting them in a little barn like this would be perfect. But I think with our weather extremes, with extreme rain, bringing moisture, um, extreme heat one way, we can get really cold sometimes. Uh, I think we're going to set up a farrowing area in my barn at our house where we can regulate the temperature in there, keep it high and dry. Um, I think that would be the smartest thing for us to do. It's just not worth the risk. Um, in this farrowing situation, we went from six piglets to one, right? Four of them being um, not making it through farrowing, um, which I think was due to temperature and uh, moisture, lots of rain. Um, so it just, it's disheartening. You find yourself thinking, oh, I, I could have done more, I should have done more. Uh, but all we can do is learn from that happening and not make any mistakes that we did make again. Um, and so I think the answer for us is we'll trailer the pigs to the house. When they get within a week of farrowing, we'll have some really nice pens, real comfortable pens built in um, the barn. We're not gonna use farrowing crates, I think. Um, that was not the problem. She did not roll over on any of them. Um, and so, but I think that'll be good. The, our barn has a concrete slab, right? We'll have lots of shavings. Um, and they, they can be nice and comfortable. We'll keep it at a real comfortable temperature. I think that's the answer for us. The one piglet's still doing really good though. She doesn't leave too far from mama, but she lets us handle them and Beth, the sow, she's gotten really comfortable with us handling them, which we like. She's not too aggressive. Um, but yeah. Let's go get some strawberries. Woo, you got you a, a cookie from the bakery? <laughs> we gonna go pick some strawberries. Take home with us. They're all up in that trailer. <laughs> Loading them, I think, ought to be pretty easy now. As long as old pine cone will get in there, we'll be in good shape. Well, pigs are gonna move to the silver pasture today and that was easy. It took me about 30 seconds. I just dropped some feed in the trailer and on they went. All right, gonna take the shelter and the netting first and start setting up the silver pasture. Got the shelter behind me. And they go straight to the mud. <laughs> okay, they like the silver pasture. We got a little mud, which again, they like. There's Teeter. I think she's gonna have piglets. She'll fare out, I think, within the next 30 days. We'll take her home for that. Everybody else is just enjoying rolling in it. Filling up the water. We've got our main line just going on the fence line. Air hose hook up to make it quick. Eventually we'll put a float valve on here, but for now I think we'll just do this. Because it'll take them a while to empty that. All right, so we have our manure cleanup team here. And the pigs aren't really sure what to think about them. <laughs> All right, we're at the barn at our house, not on the farm, but at our house. Um, and this is where we're gonna build our fair end pens. Let's get started. All 
It's time to officially start taking fig cuttings for our big orchard we're installing. The guys are starting over there. Got the back of the slide by slide already full. We're, our goal is to do about 2,000 trees. That's the goal, 2,000 trees. Uh, we'll do about 800 in our orchard and the rest is insurance and we're probably safe. But let's get started. So we'll be opening for picking tomorrow. We just have a ton of really nice fruit in here. You can see some of the red, of course, a lot of white, which we like. Those are blues. All right, we got our fig uh, cuttings going, huh, Crawford? Yep. This is a Froberg fig. Throw a little creation there. We can turn it. How many, uh, how many cuttings do you think we have in the back of that right there? The back of that side by side? Uh... <laughs> And that ain't even the beginning. Oh, nice chilly morning out here. <sighs> they have new friends. <laughs> Taking some more samples today. They're so noisy.